Hey everyone, Michael Anthony here. Van Halen, Chickenfoot, Sammy in the Circle. But anyway, you're listening to the only podcast that is dedicated to breaking down the entire Van Halen catalog one track at a time. And the podcast will rock. Ow! Hello, baby! Well, welcome one and all, all and one, all you rockers, rockets, and everything in between. It's all inclusive. It's all good. Thank you for joining us for a new edition of And the Podcast Will Rock. Welcome back to the show, you guys. Uh, I, I've been saying it for the past couple of weeks, and I'm just going to say it again. We are coming down to the wire uh, as far as the this iteration of the show as we know it. So uh, we're in the single digits, not very much left in the catalog. So uh, you you have come at uh, quite the time. Uh, if, it, if this is your first time finding us, welcome, welcome. And uh, just to give you a little example or an idea of what we are we are the show that dives into the catalog and discography of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time van halen and we do it one track at a time i am your co-host mark kamire with me as always Corey morissette Corey, how you feeling are you uh, uh i think we're both exhausted yeah well i'm sure i'd feel much worse if i weren't under such heavy sedation oh my god this <laughs> this week has been the longest month of my life i've uh uh, I, I've been telling Mark, I, I've been chasing a, a, a power cycle hum uh, in an audio feed all day because uh, I'm setting up for this big award show that I'm shooting tomorrow night. I have to do audio too. And, there, and there's just that, that buzz that, zzz, that you hear on fucking everything. When, whenever power leaks into audio, uh, that's what you hear. Uh, and I've been chasing that all day. We finally ripped the fucking amp out of the cabinet at the old hall, rewired everything, got rid of the hum. I come here tonight and I start working on my Van Halen stuff and I'm playing without you. Uh, from Van Halen 3, because I really dig that song. And sure enough, in the guitar breakdown, there's that fucking hum. And I thought it was in my, my I thought it was just an artifact in my head. I'm like, am I going to hear this everywhere I go now for, for the rest of my life until I die? But no, it was actually actually on the song. So that was torturous. Uh, but uh, I'm here, uh, I'm self-medicating, uh, and I'm glad. I, I need some Van Halen goodness tonight, Mark. Well, I'll tell you, uh, y- you mentioned uh, Without You from Van Halen 3, and... Uh, Van Halen goodness is is I wouldn't use that particular song and that phrase in the same sentence, but that's just me. That's a great uh, song. Uh, I, I dig that <laughs> song. That is right. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, that might have been the one song from that album that I've upvoted. Two. Or oh, the year to the day as well was the other one. Yeah, we both uploaded. That's that one, so. right. I can't wait go. for well, regarding Van Halen three. I bet you they. I bet you Chaz and uh, Scott turn us around uh, on an awful lot of those songs. So. There is a very good point. If anybody could do it, it would be them. So a uh, little plug for our boys at Regarding Van Halen 3. Tune into that. Corey, what in the world could possibly be happening in the world of Van Halen right now? Because, uh, you know, we got Sammy on tour with Mikey. Uh, Wolfie's doing his thing. And then every day it seems like we're on the uh, we're just on a ticking clock waiting for whatever the hell david lee roth is gonna do so uh any any interesting things happening over there at the news desk you know there, there there's quite a bit i wanted to break a little and the podcast will rock uh news first if i may oh uh, sure so uh, as we all know uh we're only five songs away from finishing the van halen catalog uh we've got a few more things to, to kind of uh you know get off the docket if you will uh, we've got some live shows we've got to finish up uh, the van halen catalog on the live shows we're gonna do a wrap-up show uh with kevin brown uh, who knows what sort of evilness uh, he's planning for that. Uh, but then after that, uh, we, we were going to go on to uh, the solo stuff. And what we decided to do, uh, breaking a little bit of uh, news here for you folks, is uh, we're going to let our patrons decide every month what albums we're going to cover every single season. So it's going to be one Dave's album, one Sammy album, one Gary slash Wolfie slash Mikey album. I, I think I'm going to put Sammy in the circle and chicken foot on Michael Anthony's to, ha- to help pad out that mm-hmm. side a little bit because there's a lot. And then one of like Van Halen influences are just kind of wild cards. Uh, so I put up the first poll last week. And Mark, I don't even think ah. I, I, I've told you this yet, but I put up the first the first poll of all the uh, David Lee Roth albums. I said, which album should we cover uh, the next season, which will be season four of Van the Podcast Will Rock uh, coming first week of August? And the Patreons uh, spoke 
uh, pretty overwhelmingly. Here, here's the results here. Uh, eat them and smile. Uh, 13 votes. Uh, that, that is, is my shock. <laughs> you know, I, I thought maybe they would want to hold off on Edom and Small for a later season, but nope. Let's get the big no, one out no, of the way. They want it right away. That's you know right. Our audience, they, they, they want us to get to the things <laughs> they want right now. That's right. You know, we have to tease them a little bit, but uh, this time they, uh, they, they voted and here we are. <laughs> Yep. Uh, the next closest was Skyscraper with six votes. And then we had Crazy, uh, a little late enough had four. Uh, Crazy from the Heat had two, as did the DLR band album, uh, Diamond Dave. And the California Sessions, that's kind of what we're dubbing uh, everything recently he's been putting out. Uh, all the stuff that was supposed to be for his book slash movie, whatever that was going to be. And um, every kind of miscellaneous thing he's been putting out, we're just kind of dubbing into the California Sessions. So next season, the Dave album is going to be Eat them and smile. Now, uh, later tonight, uh, if I'm not too drunk, I'm going to put up the poll for the patrons for the best uh, for the Sammy album. We'll see what they vote is going to be the Sammy album uh, that goes on that wheel. But I thought that was and that's actually an idea. I think it was Scott Monroe. Uh, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong. You're kind of the show yes, uh, historian. I think so. Yeah, uh, he came up with that for me. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So uh, uh, and I thought for the wild card this round, um, it, it's, you know, Eddie in a few articles listed his uh, six favorite albums of all time. I think I talked to you about it. Peter Gabriel. So was on there. Uh, ACDC mm-hmm. Power Ridge. We're going to put all those in a poll, too, and the patrons will get to pick which one of those albums goes on that season's wheel. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And Scott's me, already... Guys. Don't disappoint me. He's already uh, <laughs> screaming for Marching to Mars. So there you go. That Will that be the first uh, Sammy one on the wheel? We'll find out. Uh, everybody... That one's... That's the one I'm looking forward to the most is, honestly... I mean, I, I know I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm a Sammy guy, but I'm just saying uh, Sammy's got a lot he's got a lot to work with. So I'd be very curious to, to see what the, the poll results end up being that you guys want us to cover with him first. That's right. And uh, but before we get into the actual Van Halen news, uh, we actually had a few reviews. Uh, I haven't been uh, following up on our reviews because oh, normally they're bad. Uh, actually, I think on, on Apple, we're sitting at 4.4 out of five. I, I can't complain about that. Uh, you know Tom, what? that's fine. That, that's great. Tom in the chat pointed out, we have 631 YouTube uh, subscribers. So thank you everyone for joining us on YouTube. Um, I know we're doing absolutely no work. Uh, to uh, to gain more YouTube followers, uh, I I normally forget to upload the uh, the episode on time. I think I did it on Monday this week because I forgot well, all weekend. I, I, but by by all means, like keep subscribing, keep watching, yeah. and 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 share because you never know. Maybe maybe it comes a time uh, where we get more YouTube savvy. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. But I I, I found a few reviews. I, I wanted to read them out here uh, for, for you, Mark. Uh, the first one here is from February this year. Uh, it's a four star review, so pretty good. Uh, it's from uh, Bunge22, uh, and they say, I just discovered this podcast and have been furiously listening to the first 40-plus episodes. At first, I found myself yelling at my phone that they really know nothing about Van Halen. But once I understood th- their take, I found I really found myself enjoying it. So, yes, thank you for, for getting the assignment, my friend. Um, listening to them hear some of these songs for the first time is making me hear those so- same songs in a different light. As a super fan of Van Halen, I really appreciate what they are doing. If you're looking for experts, go listen to Dave and Dave Unchained, and I fully recommend everyone go listen to that podcast. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, if you just want to break down the songs as a fan of the Mighty Van Halen, Corey and Mark are doing just fine. I love that. We're, we're, we're not doing good. We're, we're not doing great. We're, doing, we're just doing, we're doing just fine, and I'm, I'm totally cool with that. So, If we can sway you from screaming at your phone where we, <laughs> you know, obviously can't hear you and you're just screaming into the void at that point if we can sway you from that to all of a sudden you guys are doing just fine <laughs> then that's a win to me i'll 100 that is a big big win you're right there buddy yeah. oh thank you sir for listening <laughs> scott monroe in the chat you're doing a perfectly adequate job yes thank you very much that's all <laughs> that's we're looking perfect. for that's perfect yeah. uh, i'm not that's kevin brown way. begging for accolades every week uh, I, I, i'm can good we, with i'm good with adequate can we get to uh kevin whenever you hear this uh can we get that as the next uh, t-shirt idea like <laughs> a perfectly adequate podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a good one yes i, I will wear that shirt proudly uh our, our next uh, our next review a five-star review uh from uh, chanel uh from the united states uh, she put, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a her. Uh, my apologies if it's not. They, they put the little uh, squiggly line over the A. It was like Chanel. Uh, she says... Oh, he, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Fantastic hosts that are well-spoken and have insightful commentary. So I don't know which podcast she mixed us up for, but I, I, I appreciate the review. Maybe it was a uh, an episode... Maybe she's heard the episodes where Sean and Todd are on and she's just <laughs> distracted by Todd's voice. Maybe. 
Uh, poor Josh in the chat here tonight. Steve. I received a marginally satisfactory on a job review. Ouch. Wow. Oh, oh. That's, those are grounds for, uh, t- tell me the person who wrote this and so I can give him a punch in the face. <laughs> like, how dare you? Jeff Bruce, well spoken. I don't think anyone said uh, well spoken. <laughs> oh no, she did fantastic posts um, that are well spoken. Yeah, she, yeah, she obviously did. confused um, this with somebody uh, else. Thank you, Jeff, uh, for pointing that out. Fucking dick. You know what though? I uh, I'll take the W on that as well. So thank you, uh, <laughs> Chanel, or have you pronounce it? I apologize, yeah. but thank you for listening. Tom says uh, we're perfectly cromulent. I'll take that. Ooh, those are those are big words. And I don't our, understand them. Our good buddy Ryan Powell says nonsense. You're both meeting expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Hell sir. yeah. One more review here. Uh, this is from DDDD1964. And this just came in a few days ago. A fun listen, it's titled. Five Star Review says, Only recently discovered this podcast and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Some episodes are gut busting funny. A must listen for Van Halen fans. Love it. Fantastic. Yes. Thank I, you so much. That's. You know, no, uh, that that one might be my favorite because uh, it's. I I love it when we have moments that just absolutely slay us because uh, I it comes, it comes out a, a spectacular episode most of the time. So, if you think we're gut bustingly hilarious, then that that is high high praise of the highest uh, value that I could ask for. So thank you for listening and thank you for saying so. How do we we'll get those guys in our fun. chat? Because we don't have, I know, right? <laughs> because we have uh, jerks like Ryan Powell who said we're meeting expectations, and then followed that up with, "I never said what the expectations <laughs> were, though." Thanks, buddy. Uh, ugh. Between <sighs> between that and you know the the constants uh, of. The constant uh, kind of meh comments on <laughs> by false premise. That's right. I called you out. <laughs> I haven't checked oh, the Twitter well. feed. Is there a good buddy false premise uh, busting our balls there? Or? Probably. I haven't looked at it yet. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll do that as you go through the uh, Van Halen news. You know what? I, I really appreciate him. Uh, you know, giving us a listen though. So uh, he he's been with us for for quite a quite a while. Oh, he, Ryan Powell says they could be high. I, I I doubt that. Trust me. Unless unless Christie's around, nothing's high. Oh. <laughs> Amsterdam, maybe tonight. Who knows? It might be. Might be the night. We'll All right. Uh, we we've made the people uh, wait long enough. Uh, let's get into some Van Halen news. Uh, here's a, a funny little article in the Van Halen news desk. Of course, get all your Van Halen news at www.vhnd.com. Such articles as Sammy Hagar recalls bloody Van Halen tour injury, and that's the opening night of the 1988 tour. Uh, he fell and busted his tailbone, and he actually talks about you know. It ripped through my leather pants, which is a, a real problem uh, for leather rockers. Whenever you break your tailbone, you're going to rip your leather pants. But he reached back, yeah. and it was just nothing but blood. Uh, he made it through the show, though, and, and that's an important thing. Uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of guys, you, you know, we live in an age where uh, bands cancel tours because they lost their laptop. Uh, not back in the day, right? <laughs> Sammy Hager's like, fuck that broken tailbone. I'm going to keep playing. Good on you, Sammy. Yeah. Um, if you can't play without your laptop, you're not a band. You're a DJ. Fuck exactly. You. Fuck so there you. you. There's my negative comment of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. Had to be said. You big Pearl Jam fan, Mark? I do love me some Pearl Jam. That new album uh, slaps pretty hard so far. All right. Well, Pearl Jam's Mark. Mike McCready reflects on uh, Van Halen influence. Uh, they were on the Howard Stern show. So you can kept catch the, uh, the interview there. Uh, David Lee Roth's bunny suit story gets animated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a buddy suit story. It took place during a different kind of truth. Go to the VHND and find out more. But a bit, the big news uh, for Sammy lovers anyway was uh, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, just a day or two ago. So uh, well deserved. Uh, until I found out, all you really need is seventy five grand and a bunch of signatures on a petition to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hell, Mark and I, if we had that kind of cash, and uh, you know had the signatures. Uh, we could probably get a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but yeah, I was gonna say it's like unfortunately, like you can buy your star because there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, stars on the Walk of Fame that are questionable as to like like why would they get a star? And you find out it's like a billboard; you can just pay for it and you yep. can get it, and it'll just it'll just be there from now on. Uh, yeah, if we had that kind of dough, you think I wouldn't uh, splurge on? on a Hollywood Walk of Fame star? I would, because that would be the only the only chance I could remotely get one. <laughs> All right, and uh, finally, uh, on the news desk anyway, uh, our good buddies at the Bogus Oda Show, uh, they've been on the show numerous times. Uh, I'm going to meet up with them in Toronto at the Sammy Show. 
Uh, they're actually yes. uh, circulating a petition to get uh, Sammy Hagar inducted into the Hall of Fame as a solo artist. Uh, so I think he should. Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree. I'm going to sign that petition as soon as we're done here tonight. But uh, yeah. if you agree, uh, the link is on there. Uh, let, let's help get Sammy inducted uh, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, and that's all that's on the news desk. But if you're a fan of Rock Docs, uh, there have been some great ones uh, lately, uh, including um, the, the the Bon Jovi one. I don't know if anyone uh, caught that on uh, on Disney uh, Plus uh, for us uh, uh, foreign uh, viewers. Uh, uh, but Americans can watch it on Hulu, uh, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was really good. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Behind the Music, I uh, mentioned this, I think, last week. Uh, Wolfgang Van Halen's episode of Behind the Music dropped. Um, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, I have to kind of time it right where all the episodes drop it. I can sign up for a free week of Paramount Plus and then just ditch it right away because there's nothing else on there that I need to see. That's correct. That's correct. That's what you need to do with that. That app is trash. But uh, a lot of people in our our chat, and I know in our Discord too and on Twitter, have been talking about just how amazing uh, the Behind the Music with uh, Wolfgang Van Halen was. Uh, Ryan Powell even says, it's amazing, but man, a hard watch because, yeah, he talks obviously a lot about his dad. Uh, his mom also uh, features very prominently on there. So uh, by all means, uh, if you have uh, Hulu or, or Disney Plus for all of us foreigners, uh, go check out uh, uh, Wolfgang Van Halen's Behind the Music. Uh, I can't wait. Absolutely. I'm excited to see all of that. Um, I, I I saw you talking about the, uh, the, the Bon Jovi doc, and I didn't even realize that was a thing until you were talking about it and then uh, looked into it and was like, okay, cool. So definitely excited to uh, see what that's all about. Four episodes. I'm not even like a... Yeah, I'm not even like a super huge Bon Jovi fan, but uh, you know, you know everybody what? knows Bon Jovi. What know? I what I liked about it too is that uh, it, it was more honest. Like they they obviously they don't mm-hmm. talk about a lot of things. Like they don't talk about when John got caught lip syncing uh, during the "This House Is Not For <laughs> Sale" tour, uh, singing a of track that not. yeah they didn't talk about that. But you know they they, they interview uh, Richie's in the show. They talk about Richie leaving the band, but they really follow John going through his vocal problems on that last tour. Remember, everyone was mocking John Bon Jovi. Oh, he sounds like shit. Um, you know, he was kind of, he kind of knew there was a problem, but he had a come to Jesus moment with his wife after the last show of that tour. She's like, you really don't sound good. And he finally went and looked into it and found out one of his vocal cords atrophied and he had to have surgery. Uh, So, and they, they follow him through that process where he's even trying to get back into shape, uh, singing wise. And he's just not there. And he, you know, there was a great moment where he's singing some new stuff and he's just like, fuck that sucks. Uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to get it back. It sounds promising that he's going to get it back, but. They were they were pretty honest. I, I like a rock doc that is honest, uh, not not just a fluff yeah, piece, you don't right? Get any of those? Yeah, a lot of times it's a fluff piece. Show me a get back uh, from the Let It Be sessions where they show warts and all, like George fucking leaving the Beatles, that kind of right. thing. They don't just gloss over it. Like there's been so many. Like if you watch, it's not a documentary, but Bohemian Rhapsody had that so much of that. You know, we're all awesome shine, just put over everything. Yeah, just a glossy, so yeah, exactly. And it's like, why would you do that? No. Yeah, it is just sugary sweet, and there's some still decent stuff in that movie, but it's it's hard to take it seriously. Their BBC documentary, um, uh, these are the days of our lives. I think it was called. Also, kind of the same, but I, I appreciate a rock doc that'll actually tell the real story, kind of like a history of the Eagles. I'm not even a big Eagles fan. But, um, you know, that's that, a good, doc. good doc, right? Warts and all. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Petty running down the dream. Same thing. Uh, that's what I found this Bon Jovi was. Yeah. They didn't tell everything. They glossed over some stuff, but they, they get into John's vocal problems and why Richie left, uh, originally and all that kind of stuff. They didn't really get down to the, you know, brass tacks of it, but you, you at least get a sense of it. It's worth the watch is what you're saying. Yeah. hundred percent. Cool. Cool. I'm excited to do that. All right, so uh, that's it for the news. I believe it is, yes. Well, let's go on, go on over to the rock, rock and poll from last time we were on here. And last time we went over the uh, highly, oh, well, not highly, but uh, often requested, I had noticed, Little Dreamer. Little Dreamer from uh, from Van Halen, from the early, the early Van Halen, the first, the beginning, the opener the uh, uh self-titled track van halen one little dreamer i mean every track from van halen one is going to be requested a lot because we all love that album us van halen fans that's the one that brought us all together for the most part uh so it would be uh it, it would not shock you Corey, perhaps to know that little dreamer scored a what dreams are made of 88.2 percent versus a uh an 11.8 percent dream is over my question to you is what about this song do you think people didn't enjoy? I I don't know. It's not one of my 
uh, must listens uh, from Van Halen one. I, I still upvoted. it. I still like the song. To me, uh, it's stuff like Little Dreamer that keeps Van Halen one from not being my favorite Van Halen record. That's why I like two oh. in 1984 better. Uh, but I would put this above 5150 because it's better than Inside. Uh, but uh, 88 for me, like if I was rating it on a scale from one to 100, I'd give it in the 70s. Like, you know, it, it's good. It's well played, obviously. Well sung. Yeah. I, I dig it, but it, it, it's not the strongest material on that record. Uh, for me, actually, it's probably the weakest. Uh, but 88.2 uh, for me, uh, you know, that, that that's that's pretty high when you look at the rankings. Uh, Little Dreamer actually comes in at number 35 uh, out of all the songs that we've covered so far. Uh, we're currently sitting at, what, 118 songs that we've covered? Little Dreamer mm -hmm. uh, coming in at 35. It's below Hear About It Later, but above Top of the World. Uh, and why can't this be love? And push comes to shove. Uh, so I, mean, I it's, would. It's over. It's it's over. Probably some really big hits of the Sammy era. Yeah. And best of both worlds. It's blows, beating somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that blows my mind. I just uh, look. I know everyone. We we enjoy Van Halen one. I know that, and I know so many of you just uh, think that David Lee Roth is the quintessential vocalist, and there is nothing else. So you give certain songs a pat, but I mean, like, I'm again, I upvoted Little Dreamer, if you recall. Uh, but I, this, yeah, it's just, I don't understand how you vote this one so high and then vote some of the other like big bangers lower, especially if it's uh, part of the Sammy era. Do you guys just, are you all just that anti Sammy? I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. So I, I want to. Take a dive into uh, the, uh, the the comments, the tweets here under the poll to see what people are saying. Uh, we had a lot. We had a lot of comments on this one. And I'm going to read the ones from our humble patrons. That's right. If you want your tweet guaranteed read on the show. Uh, and if you want access to the Discord where you can really let us have it with a mini festo, as we call it, uh, then join the Patreon, you guys. I tell you every week, I'm going to keep telling you till, you till you do, till you all join us. We we want you all with us to join in on the fun. Speaking of fun, Heath McCoy, our friend Heath McCoy, says this is the closest Van Halen ever came to a ballad in the Roth years. For all the Dave vocal bashers, I'd say give this song a listen. He delivers it like a crooner with a ton of style and charisma. Despite the power of Sammy's pipes, he could never pull this off with an ounce of what David Lee Roth brings. I love Heath McCoy's passion. I disagree fundamentally with everything he said in the last half of, of this tweet. Um, I'm going to side I, with I, you. Yeah, because I, I, I think Sammy <laughs> could, could pull this off. He's not... He's crooning, but fuck, I, I'm pretty sure I could sing that. Like it's it's it, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a dynamic vocal performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sammy might not give you the croon, but he would definitely give you a really damn good rendition. I believe, anyway. Give me some uh, swing, but, some swagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely some, definitely some swing and swagger. So I mean, that's what this song needs. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't need a crooner per se. It's not a, it's not that type of style. But anywho. Uh, but I, again, respect to Heath. We love Heath. Uh, our friends, uh, the aforementioned Sean and Todd at the Sean Geek and Fast Fret podcast, they said, see, these are the tracks that get me the most from Van Halen. Dave is in his finest form here. One of my top tracks on this album. Sure, I love the rockers on Van Halen 1, but there is so much more going on with this one. Maybe it's from listening to my mom doing jazz slash blues. Top track? <laughs> so, uh... Mm. Uh, I'm assuming that's a that's a Sean uh, tweet, and you know Sean Sean sometimes has some some interesting points of view as to why he votes, and there's always a story that comes with it, and that's what I appreciate about it. So I dig that. I dig what he says there. All right, moving on. Our friend Rava Flave says a terrific song that doesn't get much attention, featuring an unusually subdued David Lee Roth. It also has a nice, uncharacteristically non David Lee Roth ending. Everything is great about this rarely discussed tune. So Raven Flame, big fan, big fan. Our buddy Josh, Fat Man on Guitar, says Stone Cold Classic. Uh, that groove, Dave's vocals are perfect. The chord stabs in the verse leading so much space. The ooze, the chorus riff, uh, the chorus fills, that solo. What is there to improve on? A great example of restraint making a song better. Hashtag what dreams are made of. So, wow, so white passionate for this song 
wouldn't have expected that but then again look at the uh the poll results 88.2 so that's right a lot of a lot of love for this one uh scummer was on discord duh, 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 duh. and that'll do it for uh twitter and then we move on over to the discord where you can really let just let your creativity flow and uh post a mini manifesto about how you feel about the track but you got to have access to the discord to do that how do you do it join the patreon you know you know the song and dance so uh thank you scott for letting me know where it starts scott monroe says claymation videos on vhs aside little dreamer is a hidden gem on van halen's debut album a powerful riff and melody but i echo the panel sentiments that the song is all about the groove the tempo is just right, and it stands apart from the rest of the record in that regard. I appreciated Davy Lee Smith's interpretation, our friend Davy Lee Smith, that was on the show. He appreciates his interpretation about the lyrics. I always took the story that Davy Lee Roth was telling to be specifically about a woman. Quote, I had to tell them, baby, you are armed with all you need, end quote. But I never thought about the, mes the message also implying to the band as an as up and comers. Of course, you can always expand the message in the broadest possible sense, too, and see it as being about anyone who has motivation slash aspirations in the face of adversity. So that definitely indicates death to the lyrics with multiple possible meanings, which is impressive, given that there are just two techniques. Uh, just two unique verses and a simple repeat the song title approach to the chorus, which Van Halen is famous for doing. Uh, it's a similar message to Wolfgang's lyrics in the title track Mammoth, where he sings, anything is possible. You're not the only one. Yeah, let them think you're unremarkable and prove them wrong. As I said, while lurking, Mikey's ooh harmonies really elevate the song as the harmonizing tends to do with just about every Van Halen track. But here it adds an ominous pensive flavor that really suits the tale Dave is telling. This, of course, what little dreams are made of. So another passionate manifesto, from Scott Monroe. He always knows what to say. Um, but, you know, I guess uh, uh, there was there was a lot more. Let's see here. Da, da, da. Oh, he's a uh, never mind. Heath McCoy was responding. And Brad Gould says Little Dreamer is made up of dreams. So, of course, it's what dreams are made of. It's a great bluesy song that epitomizes the concept of less is more. Great piece by the band with a great sound from Ed. Mike with a simple but forward bass line where he and Ed will riff here and there here and there and those harmonies. Uh yeah, there he goes, Brad Gould. And then Jeff Brewer says, uh, Little Dreamer is the least great on the album, but still great. So he's kind of with you there. It's like, it's not not his favorite. Definitely not the one you uh, turn to automatically from this album. You might even dare skip this one. If there's ever a track on Van Halen 1, you might skip. Maybe it's this one. Uh, that's what it sounds like uh, is coming from Jeff. Would you agree with that, Corey? You would just skip over this one? I, I, I've skipped it on occasion. Um, like it's, it's not bad. I, I dig the groove. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. something about like, there's just better material on that record. And, uh, Ryan Powell in our chat, uh, with his own mini manifesto here, uh, for little dreamer, he says underrated on a killer album, hot take better than Jamie's crying. Love the dark tone. Uh, Jeff wow. Brewer chimed back with, I prefer Jamie's crying. And I got to say, I do too. Uh, if I I'm, too. if I'm raking the tracks, I'm putting Jamie's ahead of this one, but still nothing wrong with little dreamer. Like I said, it, it it's the groove that kind of saves it for me. Uh, like, yeah. yeah, and it's still yeah, it's still a good song. Don't get me wrong. It's just uh, the the vote so high for it is just puzzling. But what do you do? All right. So with that being said, Corey, what do you say we move on to uh, the next section of the show? Right before we spin the wheel, we gotta make a great guess. We have to bring something forward. You know what it is? It's time for manifestations. Yes, sir. Boom. Ba -ba 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 Sound effects. Uh, there's only so many we can manifest, though. That that's the problem. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> five songs. Five we songs. Yep. The bottom five, and we already know that uh, there's there's one in particular that uh, nobody wants us to spin on the last spin. <laughs> that begs the question: like, what do we do here? So uh, we can already assume that everyone's going to manifest the hardest they can this particular track because they don't want us to end this particular sh version of the show on a bad note. So let's just go on over and for funsies, because I already know what everyone's uh, what everyone is manifesting here. 
Uh, Scott Monroe, right off the bat, with very funny font, Josephina. The the elusive Josephina, the track left on Van Halen 3 that has been, uh, if you've been following us on this journey, uh, you already know, but if, you, if, you, if you're getting caught up, we do not like Van Halen 3, or actually, I won't speak for you, Corey. I have not enjoyed Van Halen 3 for the most part. Uh, and every time we come across a track that we have yet to do, it gives me a little bit of a, you know, a twist in my gut because, ugh, is this going to be revolting or is this going to be acceptable? We never know. We never know. That's, that's the name of the game. So Josephina, the, Scott wants us to rip the bandaid off before it's too late. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to agree with him. Josh as well. Josephina, uh, only the strong survive. He just, I think they just want us to spin it because they want to hear the song. They don't, they don't even <laughs> care, uh, that we're suffering. Jeff Brewer says, I'm probably going to miss the show. Good time to spend Josephina. So he's, he doesn't have to endure it. Does that mean you're not going to listen to the show later, Jeff? Cause that would, that's, that's not fair. That's not cool. Come and he's on, actually man. here. He, he was in the chat. So he, he didn't miss the show. Ah, well, I, then I stand corrected. I retract it. <laughs> and then of course, coming in, uh, coming in hot Chaz Charles for fuck's sakes, Josephina fucking hell already. He says, I know I agree. However, I'm not going to manifest Josephina. Um, Corey, are you going to manifest Josephina? I'm not. I, I'm going to try something different. Uh, my manifestations have been so bad lately. I'm going to try a little uh, reverse psychology. Don't tell the wheel. Uh, but I'm going to manifest Atomic Punk, uh, even though that's the one song nobody wants to be spun tonight because we want to <laughs> hopefully uh, spin that one last uh, for our last show. Uh, so because, uh, I'm going to, you know, reverse psychology, I'm a parent that sometimes works on an idiot children. Let's see if it works on the idiot wheel. Uh, I'm going to go for atomic punk. How about you? She's going to love that. You called her an idiot wheel yeah, but, I know. Uh, because she, she is an elusive bitch. <laughs> uh, I am going to manifest one that I have manifested before. It is, it, it is shocking that it's still on the wheel, but I'm going to do it. And you all know why Amsterdam. All right. Bringing it. Yeah. I'm just going to, that's, and it's like. No reverse psychology for me on this one. This is just the one I legitimately would like to hear and like to talk about. So uh, I'm just going to put all my manifesting powers into it. And um, it's a losing battle because I think everyone really wanting us to spend Josephina now. And I understand you're not you're not all the vi you're not villains in this story in particular. I understand what you're trying to do. It's a mercy. However, we uh it's not up to us yet it's it's up to the wheel and we have to usually abide by the wheel so all right i'm uh i'm ready to either get it over with or have fun we'll, we'll find out Corey, whenever you're ready all right we've got uh, i think six people watching on the lurker chat tonight so let's shuffle six times one two three four five six all right let's do it hey! Oh, yes. Well, the Finally, manifestation powers were just too strong. They did it. <laughs> the Patriots willed it into existence. You Josephina it. from Van Halen 3. That also means we uh, we wrap up Van Halen 3. That's that, that won't be our last live show uh, of this no, uh, of this uh, iteration of the show. So that's good too. That's good. To, yes, that's this is uh this is a good thing. All right, so this had to happen. This is so now we we take hold of one end of the band-aid and we hold it firmly in place till we're ready to rip. We're not gonna rip just yet. We actually have to get into the song. Um, but there you go. Congratulations, everybody. We're finally doing it. It's finally happening. I, of course, have no idea what to expect because uh my uh, knowledge on Van Halen 3 is was minimal before we started this journey. As we got into it, uh, the only thing I learned is that, wow, this was not, uh, to me, their best effort as a band. And uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's just, it's, it's not great. It has not been great. And of course, hashtag apologies to Gary. I don't blame you. Um, I just, you know, the, Thing, you know, shit happens, <laughs> and this and this, and this album is is. Uh, look, it it kind of. I don't want to call it shit. I just want to say it's just. It was just not not a great attempt for me. There are people who love this album. You know, as as we have found out in this journey, 
the aforementioned Scott Monroe. He's like, he's going to defend this thing and uh, tune into to regarding uh, Van Halen three. That's two plugs. That's two plugs we've given you guys. <laughs> I hope that show is like a huge success. I really do. Actually. Uh, Corey, anything to say about uh, Josephina before we kick this off? I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I wasn't super familiar uh, with this uh, song. Uh, I've only listened to Van Halen and I have Van Halen three on vinyl now. Um, I'm trying not to, to spin it too much. So I'm just spinning the ones that we've covered because I kind of wanted to be fresh for the show. Uh, sure. so, so I can give some fresh uh, takes on it. So, uh, I don't know a ton about this one. Uh, I can't even, uh, you know, recall, uh, how it goes. So I'm kind of looking forward to, uh, to getting into it here tonight. Uh, if you're ready, uh, Mark and Meyer, it's time for the final track that we need to cover on Van Halen three. This is Josephina. I'll say this. I don't know how I feel about the the tone of it, but I really dig uh, Eddie's intro for yeah. this. Uh, not not mad at it. Like I said, I, the the tone of the uh, I'm, it sounds like he's playing acoustically, uh, or maybe he's using like one of those acoustic simulators. I don't know. Um, we'll just say he's probably using just an acoustic electric. Something about the the tone of it's kind of throwing me. Um, unless he's he's using something else but regardless the tone of it I'm kind of going eh, I'm not sure if that was the move but the way it's being played and the structure of of everything happening and then the uh the intro of that the full on electric guitar kind of uh, uh just coming in uh very slowly and and quietly that's that was really really cool I like that it's a good start is what I'm trying to say it's hard not to want to compare it to more than words right cuz that was the big Gary <laughs> ballad right from 91 uh, it kind of has to, what I liked is um, I have a lot of production issues with Van Halen three mm. that have affected yeah. uh, my scoring uh, going through uh, this uh, this little journey we're going on here. But it, everything's nice and crisp and clear. Like uh, Gary's vocal sounds good. I, I mentioned I was listening to it without you uh, before this, and his vocal is just it's tinny and thin, and like he's singing it well, but it's it's mixed terribly. Like there's some sort of vocal effect yeah. that sounds like shit. Uh, it's not here though, and he sounds really really nice. Uh, vocally, it's great. So uh, Guitar-wise, it, it's really good. Uh, Scott in the chat, Scott Everett, uh, not my favorite, but a really cool mellow riff. Josephina was Gary's mom's name, so there you go. Mm. Uh, Jeff Brewer's like, yeah, rock on Van Halen. Oh, wrong week, my friend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan Powell uh, wants us to pay attention to the intricate chord progression. It is complex, but works well. Gives it a Beatle-esque vibe. So that's kind of cool, mm. yeah. I, I, I kind of hear that a little bit. Even just so far in the intro, you kind of get a, I don't know, We'll we'll find out as we dig into the song a little more. And uh, hey, Scott Haskin, world sexiest man, joining us in the chat. Just I, I, if I don't shout him out, he gets mad. So that that's the only reason why I did. <laughs> well, that. you gotta you know a Haskin sighting is uh, worth mentioning. It's like Sasquatch when you see it, you just got to appreciate it. All right, <laughs> let's get back to her. You're not a All right, Mark, uh, musically, we, we kind of had a big uh, progression there uh, leading into that that kind of that next verse. What did you think of that? Uh, musically, I like it, actually. Um, I really, 
I, I like the structure of, of what uh, Eddie's come up with. I, but I'm okay. So <laughs> apologies to Gary. He had me, he had me at the beginning, like at the beginning of each phrase of the verse, he has me. And then he just decides to what it, what it sounds like is he got vocally lazy and he just sort of uh, kind of just fell off. And it, it, it sounded like he was going to turn a phrase a certain way, and then he just didn't. And then he never, to me, sounded like he recovered from it. I guess what, I, what I'm saying is I don't like his vocal arrangement of what he's doing. I think the lyrics are fine. Like I Now that I have the context of, of Josephina and I'm reading the lyrics, lyrics are fine so far, but he's not singing it very well. At least, not to me. It just it sounded like he was kind of he didn't know what to do there, and he just kind of like shouted off this particular uh, uh, vocal delivery, and then they said, "Yeah, good enough," and kept it. I feel like it could have used maybe a few different more a few different takes, and we didn't get into it. But as uh, as the music started to swell into uh, what I assume is the chorus, or maybe the the pre-chorus or bridge. It uh, he sounded like he was going back into uh, Dave imitation mode. Um, at least th- I got a, a glimmer of that. I don't know if you heard it. Vocally, not so. I was focusing kind of on the drums because we had that Mike Post interview uh, not that mm-hmm. long ago where he mentioned that Ed played all the drums on the record because Al was going through a rough time, and it didn't sound like Al. And uh, in the chat, actually, yeah, let me just check. Uh, uh, it still doesn't. Yeah, they're even asking, like, uh, Tom Armbruster says, so based on the Mike Post interview, is Eddie playing drums on this track? And uh, Scott Monroe like says, yeah, most likely. It doesn't really sound like Alex, does it? No, it doesn't. That was, that was uh, and I had forgotten about that until the drums came in. And I went, that doesn't, oh, wait a minute. And that's, yeah, it clicked. It's like, oh, that's that's not Alex. So, yeah, you can, it, it shows. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still not hitting it. I'm still finding a lot of stuff to like. I don't know if the, the Gary... Right. Vocal performance bugs me as much as it does you. I'm also not a singer. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, p- pick those moments out. You know, I, I find it pleasant <laughs> right. enough. Uh, lyrically, we get into some weird territory, especially if he's singing about his mom. Let's get back to it here. Yeah. All right, that that was very extreme, the, that yeah, section there, that right? Uh, but he he's singing about. Are we assuming he's singing about his mom? Like I know that's his mom's name, but he's asking, "Did you break a heart like little girls often do?" Uh, the next line is "Pigtails and painted toes, all dressed up in your mother's clothes." Can you shine? It's almost like he's asking, "Were you hot when you were younger, mom?" And, and that just seems like a weird <laughs> thing to ask your mom. I mean, uh, it is a weird thing to ask your mom, but uh, sometimes. It is uh, some dude's reality, so who knows? <laughs> Maybe his mom was hot. Like, it's okay for me to think his mom was hot. It's not so much yeah, okay yeah. for Gary to think. Not so much for him. Yeah, yeah. or asking <laughs> if, if she was hot. All right, let's keep going. Big tails and painted toes All dressed up in your mother's clothes Can you shine a light? like we almost wandered into a sound garden song there for a little bit i wouldn't trash sound garden no like i'm not that. trashing sound uh, <laughs> i like sound garden no i no i just mean like uh this I, I hear i hear what you're what you're referring to but uh to me you know it's just like this is is losing me each second mm-hmm. because it's 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 not um and you can definitely tell now uh, that that's not Alex on the drums because, and no offense to, Ed, to Eddie whatsoever, but his drumming, at least so far on the song, has been just kind of uninspiring and just dull. And maybe it's also because of the way it's uh, recorded. You know, that's just the mi- the mix of the drums sound really shitty right here. And then uh, it's, I feel like Alex would have probably come up with something a little bit more interesting and a little bit oh, more. Yeah. 
just something i don't know and and again you know eddie's not a primary drummer so i'm not trying to fault him but he did play drums on this he made the choice uh for good reasons but he did it and it's just but there's just not a lot going on with it and once again uh G- yeah gary he he uh he's not doing the the dave imitation that i was afraid he was going towards he's not doing that he's doing extreme but then he's also just it still sounds like he just didn't know where to go with it uh vocally so i just i'm not i am not feeling what he's putting down on this the, the whole song just kind of seems unbalanced to me a little bit like we, we, we kind yeah, of take this big left that. turn at albuquerque into the pre-course it almost feels like a different thing you know that yeah. I, I, w- I was with them uh, with you uh, into the intro into the verse and now we're leading into the chorus we'll get our first taste of that here but that that pre-chorus kind of is that left turn at albuquerque it's like well why did we go off <laughs> down that road you know it, it, it just yeah. uh, you know it, it's peanut butter and tuna right like two great tastes that don't necessarily taste great together right and it's it's you can totally take that uh that left turn but you have to be aware of what you're going into and yeah. uh we're going into the start of what might be a ravine all right let's get back to her I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of hoping what's left of the song can kind of turn it around for me. Cause I am losing steam by the uh, excitement. You know what I mean? All right. Well, let's find out, shall we? Mark, what did you think of that? Interesting. <laughs> like it was interesting. Like I, I don't hate it, but I'm not sure if it if it's like this is we. It's not often that uh, a solo comes around in Van Halen where we think, oh, that solo doesn't fit. It has happened at least for me in my listening, probably one other time uh, when listening to Van Halen because usually Eddie's really great about playing the solo that fits the song. He, it's rare. It's a rare occurrence when, you know, if he were to go off the rails and sometimes if he goes off the rails, he can actually improve the original song itself uh, to me. But I think there was one time where his solo just could not save the song. Uh, it was because he went off the rails, didn't really play a solo to the song. It was just sort of like a whole new movement. This didn't feel like a new movement, but it did feel like, this song's dragging. What can I do to make it not feel like it's dragging anymore? And it was just, uh, I don't know. I, my brain processed it as just a lot of style, not a ton of substance. And that's not a dig at Eddie's guitar playing. That's just Eddie trying to make best of what is happening in this song so far that that was my interpretation. How about you? Uh, Ryan Powell says a weird avant-garde solo for sure, but really enjoyed the transition out of the solo leading into the chorus, which I thought was very good as well. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Scott Monroe, uh, it's more of a soundscape than a solo. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's not really a solo yeah, per se, that's... which again leads me like, what the fuck is this song about? It's not a love song about a girl named Josefina. Uh, if it's about his mom, it's creepy as all hell. What is this thing? That that That's what's bothering more than anything. Yeah, it's just or or is just uh, Josephina, uh, a handsome stranger that uh, he just made up a story about from from seeing somebody. I'm not sure. Uh, it's really hard to know. It's hard to hard to uh, to really nail down what's happening here. Uh, um, Gary, help us out, bro. If you're listening, <laughs> please. Uh, what is this song about? And I've been trying to find on the internet. You know, what is this song about? We won't judge. We just really just want to know because yeah. it's 
kind of confusing and we would like to know unless uh, uh we're not supposed to know i don't know uh, here here's uh one passage i found from van halen on track every album every song uh, where it says quote his lyrics are atypical hard rock fare addressing an elderly relative or friend encouraging her to reminisce about her younger days and shine a light on her past it's quite a su- sweet concept although sections are clumsily written forcing sharon into a garbled half-spoken delivery to make the words fit also, when the narrator imagines young Josephina breaking hearts with pigtails and painted toes, all dressed up in your mother's clothes, the effect is more creepy than nostalgic. That's kind of what I was going for. Well, then, well, now that just sort of makes me think maybe it is about his mom and maybe it is uh, coming off as a little bit creepy. I don't know. There, there, uh, there's maybe a, a non-clumsier way to, to handle that if that's what the song is. And Scott in the chat says, uh, Van Halen's song Josephina is about the band members' mothers, so everyone's mothers. When they were young, okay. the song is also about wondering what the band members' mothers' lives were like before they became adults. Okay. Which, which, so yeah, speculatory. But, yeah. But maybe don't ask her about her defenses, uh, you know, or, <laughs> you know, other, other things where, you know, did you break hearts like little girls often do, pigtails and painted toes, and maybe just a little fucking creepy is all. Well, you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to get too, too familiar with it. Um, exactly. All right. Well, fair enough. I mean, well, that's that's fine. I, I guess if you uh, if we look at it from that perspective, but still, uh, but I agree with the, uh, the the assessment that you were reading about. Some of it is uh, clumsily written, so it's just sort of it's like, yeah, it's Gary's not at least on this album um, has not been showcasing lyrical. Uh, very strong lyrical prowess, let's put it that way. Um and I wonder, because this was such an Ed project, how much input did, did Ed have any uh, input really uh, onto the lyrics on this See, one? That, that's kind of where I was going to go with it. It's like, it, well, that it might not be entirely Gary's fault here. Um, he, he actually, it turns out, might not be at fault for a large, per, a much larger percentage uh, than we had initially uh, estimated. So who knows? Yeah, you could be right. This could be... Uh, you know, outside sources uh, interfering uh, or within the house itself, just kind of like, I don't know, say this or try this line. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we, we won't know unless we get uh, the scoop from the man himself. So uh, Ryan Powell says, I disagree with the clumsily written. I think the change in cadence and rhythm is interesting. It makes it more than just paint by numbers lining up the melody, which would be more uh, musically written. Sure. I think he was more referring to lyrically written. Uh, where, where it's yeah, very yeah, clumsy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- this song, like I said, structure wise, kind of takes some left turns, which is weird. Had they just gone one direction with it and had a different, like, I- I- if it's a song about your mom, that's a weird soundscape to p- kind of put in the middle, right? Y- you would expect something a little more melodic. If you're writing about aliens, you would maybe do something like this. Uh, th- this maybe should have been Love Walks In. Who knows? But um, I don't know. It just, I, I don't know if that fits what they're kind of allegedly going for uh, lyrically and meaningfully uh, in, in this song to, to kind of take that left turn. It's not bad. Like, I, I, I'm not mad at it. It just, I don't know if it fits the subject matter. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my problem with it as well. It's just, and then also, it just, it just, uh, someone in the chat said underwhelming. I think that's, that's what it is. Yeah. It's, and you're, we're not used to that from Eddie. Even when he, uh, when his solos aren't the most technical, they're not the most uh, integral he could make them. He still finds a way to make them not boring, you know. Because why, why else play a solo? Uh, this one just was just, I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> yeah, a soundscape for uh, a nostalgia trip. Maybe is that what nostalgia sounds like? I don't know. You, you put something like that on, on like Fair Warning, right? Like a, a yeah. darker toned album. In some of those tracks, uh, a song about uh, the band's moms. Uh, I don't know if you if you go that direction, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. Eh, that's just me. It, to me, it, it takes a left turn. I don't know if it needed to take. Maybe just went a little too far over the line. But let's see if the uh, the end of the song can get you back your mark. We're three eighteen in to a five forty three song. So oh. let's keep going. Okay. So 
so nothing wrong with that at all. We had some great guitar That's work like, there. Like night and day, not even the same song just from that <laughs> section alone. Like what? The, there, yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Like where the hell? Why didn't you just do that the first time or like something like it? Holy shit! Uh yeah, I got no complaints from that whatsoever. Not at all. Uh, Jeff Brewer, uh, trying to shine a little light uh, on us here, says, I think the words were written ahead of time. Uh, then Ed came up with some wild changes, and Gary had a tough time squeezing typical cohesive melodies into it. So that actually makes a lot of sense, if that was yeah. the case, right? Where Eddie had this, or sorry, Gary had this whole uh, song written out, uh, you know, interviewing his mom about her past life. Because I think everyone's always kind of wondered, what were my parents like when they were kids, right? You know, Back sure. to the Future was based on that. You know, just, you know, some cool stuff there, but then Eddie kind of came in with this, you know, the, the, that kind of whole weird soundscape a couple minutes ago, and he's like, well, how do I fucking make this work now? So I, I, I could see where that would be, where that would be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, uh, with that context, yeah, it just puts so many more things into perspective. So, okay, there you are. Like Gary's like, hey, I got great lyrics uh, about my mom, Josephina. Great. And he's like, here, slap him on this. And he played that section. He's like, oh, fuck, what do I do? And I go. Uh, okay. it, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. There's so many different sections of this song, and it, it's a struggle to try and piece them together together uh, cohesively. Uh, Ryan Powell in the chat says, I think Josephina is the most challenging song to appreciate on Van Halen 3, but with those complexities and unexpected turns, it rewards multiple listens. Uh, they're definitely unexpected turns and complexities, absolutely. Oh, man, th- this is a challenging one. Uh, Mark, we still got, like, you know, almost a minute uh, of outro here that we'll have to get to, but... I don't know, man. What do you think? Uh, I say uh, uh, press on. Let's see what, <laughs> what's left in the tank All as right. far as this guy. It sounded like they were fading out, so what is it, just going to be a minute of silence? Yeah, we'll find out. creepy at all <laughs> you don't like a good circus in, yeah we ended up in a fucking carnival and it's like, no i get it i'm sure that's supposed to invoke some sort of like uh uh you know nostalgic well, memory of the past look at the album cover right that's that's true there it is so <laughs> yeah ryan powell hence ah. the album cover there you go yeah because we got the guy getting uh, shot in the gut with a cannonball <laughs> carnies um <laughs> The uh, what's Ryan say there? Uh, he says, I like the music box ending, but a real producer would have cut that shorter, though. Oh, which correct, absolutely. Correct if, if anyone's listening along with me on Ultimate Catalog Clash, that's one of our biggest things. We did Metallica, and now even in Foo Fighters, a couple albums in, it's like that's the natural end of the song, don't extend it out. And yeah, I think a real producer would have cut that shorter, yeah, but then also, you know, 
it's Van Halen. You're, what are you going to say? Who, who's going to tell him no? You know, Mike Post even said, I didn't really produce it. I was just there to support Ed. He wanted to make a, a, an album sober. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, Jeff is so yeah. mean. He says a real producer would have cut the whole album. I don't know if I'd go that far, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm not not saying that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but before yeah, before we go down that path, uh, there it is. You guys consider the band aid ripped off. Uh, did it sting? Well, I guess uh, we'll find out. Uh, so I'll ask, I'll, I'll no, no. To you, you you're going to go first because I'm still thinking I'm so on the fence on this one. You, you, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I need you to kind of sway me. So I'm going to ask you first, Mark okay. Kamire is Josephina. What dreams are made of, or is the dream over? At the shock of no one, I'm I'm sure, especially to those of you who have an appreciation for this album and for this song, uh, and you already knew ahead of time that there's a good chance, based on how Mark has been feeling on the rest of this album and how he's been voting, there's a very solid chance Josephine is not going to work for him. And you'd be right, because it didn't. Uh, as Corey mentioned, as we were talking about, it's just like, it's, a whole bunch of different sections thrown on top of each other. Sometimes they work. Sometimes the transitions work. Uh, but f- a lot of the time it, it didn't, uh, at least not to me, it didn't. Uh, and then the point, the thing is, yeah, about this song, I get why uh, Corey's having a time because when, when the song steps up to really come together, it does. We just, I mean, I had a freak out when I mentioned that just that one, that second solo section, at, we'll call it. Um, where Ed is just kind of ripping the best way he can. And for a hot second there, it sounded like the Van Halen we all come to know and love. Um, but then it went back to uh, the avant-garde thing that this song eventually became. Uh, lyrically, again, you know, it, it started off okay, and then it got less okay with more context, and then back to... S- kind of okay but not really but again you know context is everything but if we're just viewing this as a song and as we're being presented for the like for the first time as it was for me nothing about this um well a lot of the guitar work worked for me what didn't work was the the tone and the mix and we've talked about that and i think this song in particular was greatly affected by that i don't know if uh if it were properly mixed and produced or at least oh, just better if it was if it was produced and mixed better let's say it that way uh would that improve the song would that make the song more tolerable or really cool i can't say i can only i can only say that maybe more tolerable but if it's more tolerable that doesn't mean it's a win for me <laughs> so for me i gotta say uh with the exception of just a little bit of the guitar work from eddie which is great everything about the else about the song just didn't work uh voc- this is not gary's vocal best uh lyrics aside uh just vocally i was not not into what was being presented here and again may not be his fault entirely but nevertheless that's still his voice on it and to that i am saying no and to all of that i'm saying this is why josephina the final track of van halen 3 for me is uh the dream is over so with all of that being said you've uh you've had some time to collect yes, your yes. thoughts Corey. you've heard my uh two cents i'm mm-hmm. sure uh uh the chat's probably given their opinions so i ask you is josephina excuse me is Josephina for you with the band-aid firmly ripped off? Is it what dreams are made of, or is the dream over? Man, I was back and forth. I, there's so much in here I like. I really like. Like I, I love the intro. Uh, I, I love that that soft on the on the verses. Oh, Josephina, blah, blah, and it's it's played really well and it's sung really well. I thought. Uh, I know you had some issues issues vocally. Uh, when you get to the pre-chorus, that's when I have issues vocally, and really with that whole pre-chorus, because that belongs on a different song. Uh, and, and that was really kind of kind of my main sticking point here, was that had they just kind of done Josephina as like a, I don't know, a standard or stock kind of, uh, you know, wistful uh, ballad of days gone by, I think it would have worked a lot better. 
Um, but we, we, we kind of take that left turn at Albuquerque and, and never really quite recover. And there's and then they put in a really great guitar solo. They have that really uh, weird soundscape that doesn't fit at all on this song. And then all of a sudden we get into uh, the guitar solo and it's really good. And it's like, well, now I'm back on board. And then it kind of, you know, then we have the circus at the end. And it's like, it's just so disjointed. Um, whoever made the comment of a real producer, uh, I, I think hit the nail on the head. I actually found a Gary Sharon co- uh, quote uh, about this song where he uh, mentions oh. a real producer. Uh, he says, I uh, quote, a producer might have heard Josephina and said, yeah, okay, let's put that over on the side. We need a rocker, <laughs> which maybe they, <laughs> they, they should have done. Uh, there, there, there's still yeah. a lot of good stuff on here. And Scott Monroe's are saying, uh, don't worry, Corey, we'll turn, we'll turn you with a Kevin Brown edit. And you probably will, because if you snip some stuff out, stitch some stuff together and, and make it the song I kind of had in my head, I think it's a really good tune. A lot of good stuff here. <laughs> but uh, for what we're rating uh, on the Van Halen 3 uh, record here, uh, geez, just barely for me, uh, the, the dream is over. I'm really curious to see uh, how the Twitter poll uh, turns out this week. I know people like uh, G- uh, you know Ryan Powell, Scott Monroe, they're going to be upvoting it. But uh, like sure, the general sure. public, if they if they even listen to the song before they vote, I don't even know. But if, if you're listening to Joseph <laughs> Fee, you're like, well, that's good. Well, that's not so. Well, that's good. Well, geez, why do they do that? Oh, and that's good. It, it's so back and forth. And for that reason uh, alone, I kind of had to downvote it just because uh, a song shouldn't take you uh, you know, highs and lows. It's like my fucking blood sugar. I'm diabetic. It's really high at one moment, then it's really low the next. And that's kind of what Josefina was for me. That's what you want your song to be compared to diabetes. <laughs> there you uh, go. That's, uh, yeah, that's not a. That is that is not a great review. So, uh, sorry, boys. Apologies to to Gary and and to all uh, uh, to my post, I guess. But uh, yeah, this one is just uh, it's not happening. Um, part of me is. Oh boy! Oh, Mark, that music can only mean one thing. That means they actually played this song live. I can't. I gotta look. You know, you can. It's like Wikipedia. You can. You can edit set lists. So I mean, I feel like. I feel like people are having a go. Well, according to setlist.fm, this song was played. So the question now becomes for you and you alone, and our, our lovely uh, patrons in the lurker chat, if they want to chime in as well. How many times did uh, the mighty Van Halen perform Josephina live in concert? I can't imagine they played this very much, but uh, who knows? Maybe maybe on the uh, Van Halen 3 tour, they, may, they played it every night. Okay, so then I'll be generous. Uh, I'll, I'll be more generous than this song probably d- deserves in the, for this game, the purposes of this game. I'll say they play this thing... 20 times. 20 times? You're right with Scott Monroe, then. He's also saying 20. Uh, Scott Everett uh, is saying the, they played it tons. It was an encore. Uh, he's guessing 51 times. Uh, Scott Haskin, uh, who knows nothing about Van Halen, uh, is guessing 12. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Powell is saying 35. Uh, Tom Armbruster says uh, he knows there's an acoustic version on a Japanese TV show. Man, that would be kind of cool. Uh, your wow. vote again was 20, Mark? Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, just because you were uh, so far away, I'm going to give you one of those. Right now, currently, our winner is Scott Everett. Uh, he guessed 51 times. The correct answer, 60 times. Wow. Well, that's much too generous <laughs> if, I, if I'm the one keeping score there. But all right. Well, okay. At that... I need to I need to know more about this uh, Japanese show that is featured <laughs> featuring this song acoustically. Like, what? What? Why? And what show? And like, why? Why is that a thing? I just I'm so curious about that. That would so, be something. You know, yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to give you the last ever uh, the set list that this song featured on because uh, sure, uh, sure. really interesting set list. Uh, they last played this at the Yokohama Arena in Yokohama, Japan. They opened with okay. Unchained. And then went into Without You, which live is a fucking banger. And then One I Want, Mean Street, which is fucking great. When It's Love, Fire in the Hole, uh, Why Can't This Be Love, I'm the One, then the drum solo, then Jamie's Crying, Humans Being, Somebody Get Me a Doctor, Year to the Day, the guitar solo, into Right Now, Ain't Talking About Love. Then the encore is Josephita into Panama, and then You Really Got Me, and then Jump to finish things off. 
what an odd encore set first of all like the but the rest of that set sounded awesome and i'll bet uh for several of those songs gary probably sounded great oh. um like i would i would actually yeah, i'll have to go back and see if i can find him doing uh uh some of those songs they're and, uh, amazing and i think i think it was ryan correct me if i'm wrong in the chat a long time ago earlier tonight like an hour ago said the real crime about the gary sharon era is we didn't get another album uh, because oh, yeah. after that tour, when everything kind of meshed, like Gary mentioned a lot of times, I wish we would have toured first and then went in to cut Van Halen 3 because they weren't, That's you, right. you're not really banned until you play together, right? But er, every right. footage I've seen of Gary playing uh, with Van Halen on this tour has been fucking fire. Like, and he's the best vocalist out of all three Van Halen vocalists. He can sing the Dave stuff better than Dave and he can sing the Sammy stuff better than Sammy. Got great, Ooh. great shows. But we, we never got another tour or another album out of that uh, out of that era, and it's it, it's really kind of a crime. It might have. I mean, uh, who knows what would have happened if they had gone on tour first? Like, would they have even uh, continued to go to the studio with Gary? You know, Did, would they are would their rapport have been way way better? And then uh, yeah, they would just uh, trust the creative process amongst each other more yeah it's all these there's a there's a separate universe out there in which it did happen this way um so if if multiversal travel becomes a thing i would like to hear <laughs> uh what became of van halen uh with the turnaround with gary um, yes please but yeah that's uh yeah i'm still thinking about that encore set list that's crazy that's really weird josephita in panama go- like wow into Panama, then what like, you really got me, and then uh, and then jump, uh, jump. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like such a odd transition. But uh, hey, you know what are you gonna do? And uh, the Japanese fans, they love it. They love it. Good <laughs> stuff. You know what else is good stuff? We finished Van Halen three. Yay! Do not have to talk about it anymore until the live show, uh, which will be a little Man, further is, down the line. Is that going to be a fun uh, show, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> That's going to be, you know what? Yes, it is going to be a fun show. It's going to probably be uh, the most absurd show that we've done. We've and we have done many an absurd live show, but I think that one might take the cake. That's just a, a guess. I could be wrong. It could be very chill, and it could be very quick and not at all exciting. Who knows? But <laughs> I want you all, our patrons, who are going to be joining us for that live show when it does happen, uh, to really come in and be. Not and not obnoxious, but just you know, just bring your fun flag and wave it. You know that's yes. what I'm saying. You know, like have have fun with it because for the for a lot of us, not all of us, for a lot of us listening to this album, it's not a a, a tremendous pleasure, and ranking it is not going to be uh quite fun for a lot of us. For some of you, it will be. For Scott, it'll be fun. For for Chaz, it'll be fun. It's you gonna know, be hard. It'll be, be, yeah, it, it'll be difficult for them. Um it'll be difficult for me because I want to put so many of the songs just in last place. Um, but I got my number one right show. now. Everything else is kind of fighting for uh right. two down. I have my number one and two. That's what I have. And then the rest <laughs> is like, I actually, you know what? I think I know what my, uh, my last place is going to be. Really? It's between it's two the, for me. Uh, it, there, the, we have the, the classic, how many? We have the same. Yeah. yeah we and, have the same two, I think, but I know oops. that there's, there's, one particular track that is uh, that stands apart as being just so bad it belongs at the bottom of the list so <laughs> i yeah, can't somebody. wait i tell you what we got a few <laughs> live shows uh to, to get through uh before yeah. to get uh get to that one mark and actually uh if we're talking about uh, uh live shows next week no. we'll do it live Fuck it. do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live that's right next week we're gonna do it live we're not going to record on Wednesday night. We're doing a live show. It's Woo. 5150. Man, that's going to be oh, a big yeah. one. I know Eric Sanchez is going to be here. I'm trying to get one of the bow hosts uh, on the show. Uh, Chris L. from Pot of Thunder. Uh, not a big uh, Sammy guy. He prefers the Dave Era, but he said, let me be on the 5150 show. So uh, he's probably going to be here. Uh, patrons, please uh, start writing your your essays explaining why you should be on the 5150 panel, I tell you, there, there, there's some talk about uh, the, the Van Halen 3 panel. Scott Everett says, pick your panel wisely for that show because it could become a rabid bunch. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, Somehow I get I mean, the feeling we're not going to get a lot of volunteers for the Van Halen 3 live show. 
Probably not. And then the the ones that would be actively like, like, oh, get me on that show. Get me on that show. We have to still be careful because like, are you just, just going to come on the show just to say how trashy all the songs are? <laughs> and like, say one positive thing, I guess. Well, Ryan Powell says uh, if he's not able to join the show, uh, just imagine the best possible, most convincing arguments for why you're wrong. And I, <laughs> you know what? I, I've been married uh, since 2005. That's my every day. So no problem there. Yep, it's uh, and I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, you're learning. You're not quite there yet, my friend. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I'm not. I'm not there yet. Yeah, there's still still some time. Quite some, quite a bit of time. So, yeah. uh, but uh, the learning process has begun. Scott Monroe says oh. probably two volunteers. Just a wild guess. I'm guessing he's one of them. Ryan Powell might be the second. I mean, uh, I would. Oh well, then I'm thinking three. There might be three volunteers oh. uh, on that one. So uh, Ryan and and Scott, maybe Chaz. That's, maybe Chaz. That's, yeah, those are right. my guesses. Those are my guesses. Uh, but I could be wrong. I could be uh, completely wrong. At, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because uh, we've still got a few more roads to go down before we reach the end. You guys, the final four. We're in the final four. All you sports fans, if you're into it, the final four bracket has begun. Uh, it's not even a bracket because, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it just it happens when it happens. So um, the final four. We're ready. We've 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 done what you've asked. We have spun the song that everybody wanted off the wheel immediately, and it was it wasn't immediate enough, but we got to it. So uh, uh, you're all welcome for that, <laughs> and I thank you for your manifestation powers, so that we were able to rip that bandaid yes. right off, and now we can look forward to uh, all the fun stuff in the future. Um, but big big thanks to everyone uh, involved with. Uh, uh, the patron in the chat right now big shout out to our patrons you guys are the ones keeping the conversations alive you're the ones keeping me and Corey uh in the game as it were i mean like i Corey would take over some other podcasting universe but uh <laughs> but little old me i'm just kind of like yeah i'm here I'm, I'm i'm holding i'm i'm holding on like a symbiote you know i'm attached there you it's go. like where you if you're going i'm going you know uh, but, uh, but no, 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 we, we appreciate all the kind words. Thank you to all the reviewers we got out there. Hey, you guys leave us a review. I think uh, it actually does help. Uh, you know, if the you want to get the word out, Corey and I might be finishing one phase of the show, but we're not finishing the show. We still got lots of stuff to cover. So, uh, share the word, share the name, the podcast, uh, share it all. Let people know what we got going on. And, uh, big shout out to our patrons right now, Matt Lacoste, Nate from the deep purple podcast, Rava Flav, Josh Caldwell, Greg Zito, Michael Griffith, Chaz Charles, uh, Sean McGinnity, Kevin Brown, Per Lineker, Scott Monroe, Ryan Powell, Jeff Brewer, Tom Armbruster, Scott Everett, Heath McCoy, Janice Risco, Brad Gould, Davey Lee Smith, Chad Pollock, Brett Parker from Dissect That Film, Jeff Fisher, Scott Haskin, John Drake, and Connor Burton. Thank you all so much for uh, keeping this thing, the train rolling, man. Uh, and it's just uh, full steam ahead. But... We're not the only show in this atmosphere of pot, the potosphere, as I, sh I should call it, really, uh, that loves rock music and loves to talk about it. We are part of a network that loves to do the same thing with other bands, not just Van Halen. Corey, tell them what kind of shows they can expect on the Deep Dive Podcasting Network. All right. We got some great shows on the Deep Dive Podcasting Network, including the Ultimate Catalog Clash featuring myself and Kevin Brown, where this season... We're breaking down the first 20 years of the Foo Fighters. We just finished off the color and the shape this week. Uh, next week, we start into There's Nothing Left to Lose. So that's going to be a good one. Then, of course, Kevin Brown uh, has the Tom Petty Project. This season, he's breaking down Wildflowers. That's a big, big album. So make sure you catch that. And then Kevin and Randy Woods do Seaside Pod Review, the 18th best Queen podcast on the internet. Don't uh, miss that one. Then we have uh, Scott Haskin, the sexiest man in podcasting. He does his little show. First, he does the Haskin cast, which I never mentioned. Everyone should check out the Haskin cast. He also does Uriah Heap, the magician's podcast. That one's wrapped up. You can catch it. Uh, uh, go check out the, uh, the backlog of episodes wherever you get your podcast from. Then we have Nate and John at the Deep Purple Podcast, the simple man at Skinnered Reconsidered, Terry T-Bone Matthew at T-Bone's Prime Cuts, Rye at Sabbath Bloody Podcast, Paul, Joe, and David at In the Lap of the Pods, Andy and Matt at Hawk Binge, Eric and Jonathan at Maiden A to Z, 
Daniel and Josh at Diary of the Mad Men, the Ultimate Aussie Podcast. Ben and Sam at University Speaking, the Red Hot Chili Peppers Podcast. George and Hattie at the Judas Priest Cast. Clay and Rye at North by South Podcast. Greg and Jonathan at So Far, So Pot, So What? Quit it at Volume for All. Sav, Nick, and Steve. Stav, sorry. Sav, Nick, Steve, and Mark at the Rock Roulette Podcast. Then we have the uh, Chaz-tastic Universe of Podcast. Chaz and Greg at Regarding Lulu. Chaz and Chats at Rush Rash. Chaz and Wolfie at Regarding Roger. That one just wrapped up. Thank Merciful Christ. And then coming soon, Chaz and Scott at uh, Regarding Van Halen 3. Here's a thought. Maybe our wrap of Van Halen 3 should lead into the first episode of Regarding Van Halen 3 with Chaz and Scott. I don't know. I, I know Chaz... Uh, well, Chaz Back was saying... In, he, he, he was saying... Uh, yeah, in a Discord chat that he wanted our last show to be his last show. I'm like, I don't know if that makes sense. Let our last show of Van Halen 3 lead into the brilliance that's going to be regarding Van Halen 3. We'll see what Chaz says yeah. about that. Then, of course, we have regard, uh, Rewind in 1984 podcast, the Sean Geek and Fast Fred podcast, the DLR cast, the Bogus Otis show. Go vote to get Sammy Hagar into the Hall of Fame. Booked on Rock with the legendary Eric Senich. You're All Doomed, a Friday the 13th podcast, Spinning the Wheel podcast, dissect that film three's company to a rewatch podcast and then we have our john drake podcast he was supposed to be on the show tonight but because i had to postpone the recording tonight because of work uh he couldn't make it we're gonna get john on as soon as we can but he does a couple of great sure. podcasts including the nerf herder council and talking into infinity which is a dream theater uh podcast then of course we have the one and only pot of thunder the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcast this week they had an author on talking a little journey they did uh any way you want it one of the uh, big big songs from journey's uh, back catalog so that is where you can get some more uh like-minded podcasts mark Meyer. hell yeah don't forget you guys go to podcastlerock.com to find all the backlog episodes all the links to our socials you want to reach out to us that way and uh get yourself uh some merch we got a merch store uh it's right there on the site uh, it'll take you right to our T Public store, get you some merch. Wear a apologies to Gary t shirt for me, please. Grow the army, let the voices be heard. Uh, because it just makes me giddy to think of so many of you out there wearing these shirts all simultaneously with Gary having no clue and him being forced to uh, recognize what's going on with these shirts. Tell me about this podcast. That would make me so happy. Uh, let's let's make it happen. It might happen, actually. Who knows? Could be. We're we're uh, we're crossing our fingers. So get on over there, do that. A little bit uh, helps uh, Corey and me out, and we love that. And also, all of the designs on the shirts are pretty uh, sort of inside baseball, little inside jokes, if you will, that you'll only get if you listen to the show. But if you know, you know, and you can spread the word that way. Thank you very much. Don't forget, also, next uh, Friday, you guys, May 10th, we are going live. As Corey said, we're going live to talk 5150 with the ranks. Find out where uh, all the tracks rank up for us. Uh, I, I suspect uh, divisiveness amongst this <laughs> album, but who knows? Maybe not. Maybe we'll all uh, vote the same way. Stranger Things Have Happened. That is going to be lots of fun. A lot of kick-ass music. A lot of kick-ass shows down the road. We may only have four songs left on the wheel, but that does not mean we're going to slow down anytime soon. So lots to look forward to, and we hope you join us on the journey. On behalf of Corey and myself, we are, and the podcast will rock, and we will rock you later. Later.